Welcome to Hanging at the Hangar Bar. I'm Scott. I'm Candace. I'm Lariah. And I'm Lacey. Grab a drink and come hang with us at the Hangar Bar. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Hanging at the Hangar Bar. We are in the Minx Bourbon Bar today, and we have all four of us together again. Yay! Yay! It's been a while, but today we are going to continue with our Getting to Know Your Hosts series, and we are going to wrap up with Scott's interview. That's right. This is the last one. Yeah. How about that? It's an uncomfortable place for me. I'd prefer to be on the interviewer side. Well, deal. (laughs) You made us all do it, so. (laughs) So we have some questions for you, and we are, as interviews usually go, we'll just ask and you can answer. Sounds perfect. (laughs) So, Lacey, do you want to get us started? Sure. Okay, Scott. So this is kind of a two-parter type of question. For those who don't know, Scott is into sports. You could say that, yes. More than us. So It wouldn't take much, but yeah, that's true. Yeah. (laughs) So I would like to know, or we would like to know, what is your favorite sport to play and what is your favorite sport to watch? Ooh, okay. So I am a horrible golfer, but I love to play it. It's a like Jack Nicholas. Either Jack Nicholas or Arnold Palmer, I don't remember which, once said, golf is a good walk ruined. Quick editor's note really early in this episode. It was not Arnold Palmer or Jack Nicholas. The quote was actually attributed to Mark Twain, or someone said Mark Twain actually got it wrong, and it was from a turn of the century author that was unknown. There is the story behind that quote. I'm going to have to go out and look up to see who that quote is to make sure I quote it properly. But yeah, that's kind of how I feel about golf. But I love playing. I don't get out to do it enough, which means I'm never going to get any better. But I I do love it. But football is my favorite sport to watch. I'm a big Husker fan and a big Chiefs fan. Very nice. The Huskers are break my heart lately, but that's all right. Yeah. Which means I like watching Husker volleyball more than football right now. So there we go. So would it be fair to say that any Husker sport is a good day or a oh, good yeah. sport? Or Yeah, you put a Husker sport on TV, I'm going to watch it. Okay. Even if I don't know what's going on. Like, you put me in front of a soccer or a football match, I am going to have no clue what's happening, but I'm going to cheer loud. Okay. Just hopefully not sound stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you want me to yeah, go ahead. on with mine? Okay. Next question is... What makes you keep coming back to Disney? That is such a great question. I I think for me, Disney really is, it feels like home. It feels comfortable. I know that when I get into something Disney, whether it be a movie, a park, whatever it is, I kind of know what to expect. I know what my feelings are around it. So it just feels very comfortable. It's like a warm blanket is what I would say that it just like watching a Disney movie TV show, no matter when it was, even the bad ones, I just feel like that sense of Disney. And then I think also the community, the Disney community keeps me coming back because it's such a passionate fan base that it just, it, you, you never run out of conversation. Mm-hmm. And I love that. You all know me. I'm probably the biggest extrovert out of the group. And I just, I, I make friends wherever I go and I don't mind it when a stranger pulls up next to us and starts talking about Disney. Well, if you're referring to the night we went to eat at one of our favorite restaurants, I didn't mind that either. It is no, fun. that was good. Yeah, it's fun to talk to people about common interests. And I really like your answer about knowing what your feelings are going to be when you get there, like what's expected, because I feel like we all feel this similar way where we know that even if we're kind of irritated in the moment we're at Disney and And it's all going to be okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just lets you kind of forget what the outside world is specifically going to Disney parks or on a Disney cruise. Mm -hmm. You just, you forget the outside world. 
there's like no connection to any of the bad that's going on half a mile to the west or whatever it happens to be. None of that is happening because you're there in the magic and the cast members are working so hard to give you that respite that it just it's yeah, it's like a warm blanket. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the question is, we are all going out for drinks. What are you getting? It doesn't have to be like a specific drink, Mm-mm. but what are you what are you gravitating yeah. towards most? Okay. So lately probably what the last four or five years i'm looking at candace because she will keep me honest here the last four or five years i've been really trying my hardest to get more into bourbon and i'm actually finding that i really like it so i've always been kind of like a bourbon and coke person but as i look into the minx bourbon bar and my probably 25 different bottles of bourbon that i've collected over the last four or five years just the different nuances and flavors and the different things you can do with bourbon just that turns that that really is what I I've been gravitating towards lately. I'm also a rum person. Um, I also will gravitate towards a lighter beer. I'm not a dark beer person, um, so I'll, I'll stick to the lighter beers. And but yeah, bourbon is like my go-to right now. If there's something with bourbon in it, I'm willing to try it. It's so good. It is. I agree with you there. And that falls into the whiskey and the scotch family too. There's not very much like I don't. Those, if there's anybody listening that's a bourbon person, they'll get this. I don't like really peaty things, um, but so the scotch, a lot of scotches are out. I have to be really in the mood for something peaty and smoky like that. But yeah, if if it's in the drink, I'll try it. Very good. Okay, this might be a fun one. Is there a ride at Disney that you would never go on again? Because I feel like you're the more you want to go and experience every everything. So it's pretty hard to turn you off of something. Yeah, that's that's very true. I, I'm trying to think through all the different rides. Like there's certain things that I haven't been on that I don't care if I ever go on. Like the flying carpets of Aladdin. I, that's a walk right on by for me every time. I just, I, I just, I can't with those spinny rides. Like, I feel about the way I feel the way about those all those spinny rides the way you feel about the Astro Orbiter, which is the same concept. Yeah, yeah. Only the Astro Orbiter is higher in the air and has sandpaper for seats. <laughs> <Yes>. Right, <laughs> and goes faster. And goes right. It doesn't though. Oh well, it feels like it. Maybe probably it's just because be- you're up in the air. <laughs> yeah, probably. But yeah, so all of those kind of spinny rides, I would probably go on Dumbo just because it's so iconic. But no, I, okay, I also will walk right by the Speedway every single time. I have no desire to go on the Speedway. They could rip that out and replace it with anything and I would be happy. They could, they could rip that out and replace it with like a walking path that you get to, like you can't go on it unless you're making car noises and I would like it better (laughs) than what's there. I like how you say that would make you happy instead of saying, like, it wouldn't phase me. You would say, you said, it, make it me would happy. make me happy. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> well, then you wouldn't get high from the uh, lawnmower engine right. fumes when you're on the people mover. <laughs> Good point, Candace. <laughs> Missing out on that. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> yeah, so those would be the ones that I haven't been on. I probably was on, like, in Disneyland, I was probably on the Speedway. But I was like eight or nine years old, so I don't really remember. But so let's pick that one. That's a ride I'll never go on again, even though I don't know if I've ever been on it. Wait, which ride? Okay. Speedway. Speedway. All right. Mm-hmm. Good answer. If you guys didn't know, Scott and Candace are very musical when it comes to singing, listening, even playing some instruments, all of that. So let our listeners know what kind of music do you like to listen to disney music (laughs) good answer i i if i default to i i really i do listen to almost everything i'm not a big country person but there's a few country songs that i i know i like and i'll listen to but like on my spotify playlist there's no country on my spotify playlist I there's no like rap 
like hard rap uh, like i'm not an eminem fan like that kind of music is just not my speed mm -hmm. but other than that i really will listen to almost anything if just depends on my mood really like classical if i'm trying to focus neil diamond if i want to sing along like that old school rocker like the the birth of rock candace probably will not like this i'm i'm a decent sized fan of elvis music she kind of hates that so i don't get to listen to it as much as i'd like to but i i think just the history and you'll get this from me probably from our, our podcast i'm kind of a person that's big on the history of everything like where did it come from how did we get to where we are today and so like a lot of those those people that were the original rock groups or rock solo artists are the ones that i really like queen i i do like some old 80s hair bands so yeah, really anything. I, that seems like a cop-out answer, but it's really true. If you were to go through my different Spotify playlists, you'd see such an eclectic jazz. Mm -hmm. It's it's all there except for country and rap. I feel like we're all on the same page with that, mm -hmm. where we all, it really depends on the the day, our mood, and what all we're of doing. that. It, yes, exactly. Um, this is kind of going a little off topic, but I was talking about you two the other night and how um, whenever we would get together for dinners that uh, we would cook in the kitchen, I absolutely love when you play music from the country mm -hmm. that we're cooking the cuisine of or when you are. It just, I, I don't think our uh, listeners really understand how much we love music and how, especially with Scott and Candace, how much... Uh, music is a part of your lives and everything and yeah. um and it's so cool because we all i think really love disney because of the music so well and and to, to put that i mean the whole music to go with the dinner thing that's kind of stolen from disney because it's just a, a separate part of the experience and it helps immerse you into what's actually happening mm -hmm. so i think it would be safe to say and i know this is your interview and i don't want to be taking over this but i think it's safe to say that we are basically are soundtracking our life yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's more fun that way it is mm -hmm. yeah i was then, just you know, about if you can to do say your, that if, if you can do your own theme music while you're walking down the street you are cronk level and good to go mm -hmm. <laughs> love that <laughs> <laughs> all right last question this is the one that i'm really curious about because i feel like I would have known the answer of this a um, few years ago, but now I don't know. So cruise versus the parks. If you could only cruise Disney cruise or go to the Disney parks for the rest of your life, which one would you choose? I don't want to answer this too fast. <laughs> Do you want to come back to it? You want to no, I, I know what my answer okay. is. I'm just trying to, to make people think that it's actually a debate in my head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. Okay. The cruises. Yeah. I, I just 100% like my the only thing I have against the parks is it is always go, go, go. Like you do not do a Disney parks vacation to relax. I work hard in my job on vacation i don't necessarily want to work hard and a disney parks vacation you have to work hard to make it as magical as it can be we, in our last episode when we were talking to james he mentioned that his wife did like planned spontaneity and that just ugh, it, it just <laughs> like if you have to say we have this half hour time slot where you can do whatever you want and relax that that to me is like that's not vacation. So on the cruise, you still get all of the Disney service. You get the characters. You get rides-ish. You get all of the things that are with Disney. And you get to sit by a pool and let Pablo bring you pina coladas. And cast away key. And cast away key. A hundred percent. If I had to choose between the parks and a cruise, I would choose a cruise a hundred times out of a hundred. With that said, since I don't have to choose, tip for our listeners, if you're going to do both on the same vacation, always do your park days first. 
do the cruise last so you have that time to just relax and chill versus relax and chill and come back to the hustle and bustle of a parks trip. Right. Mm -hmm. I like your answer. I think Mm -hmm. the older I get, the more I appreciate that downtime of Mm -hmm. going on a vacation because the last time we took a Disney trip together, it was so much fun. We did so many things but it felt like we needed another week off of work just to kind of... Yep. You need a vacation Mm -hmm. from your vacation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just, to me, it's kind of silly how we're four adults that don't really need to do, like, make sure we get our money's worth because we're taking children and it's like we need to make sure everyone sees everything. So Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Or. I don't know if I would pick the cruise, but I love your answer of how it's just, it is a relaxing Disney vacation. Yep. Okay. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. What is your earliest Disney memory? You know, I've been, since we were doing all of these interviews, and I I asked a very similar question to all of you, I, I think I've been thinking a lot about that one. And it actually just, I, I don't know, we were watching something, maybe it was an All Ears video or something, this last couple of weeks, and my earliest Disney memory popped into my head. And it is the shooting arcade at Disneyland, and me being an eight or nine year old, pulling up the quarter to get how many ever shots, and you shooting at the little targets there, I was sitting on my dad's lap, and that's... That's the honestly, like that's all I remember about Disneyland of that entire vacation, that shooting arcade and that moment with my dad is the only thing that I remember from that entire Disneyland day. It's not the Matterhorn. It's not the music. It's not any of that. It was that moment with my dad. That's awesome. That's my earliest Disney memory. Awesome. And what a core memory that is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What has led you to your current state of Disney fandom? Candace. <laughs> well, thank you. I will take the responsibility for that. <laughs> so I, I think you, like I was a Disney, I was a casual Disney fan before we got married. And just over time, it's just been built. So that first trip to Disney World, our first Disney cruises, as we've kind of gotten into it. And honestly, I'll go back to what I said a few minutes ago, learning more about the history connecting to why Disney exists, why the company exists and that kind of thing just brings you in like the, the fact that they have such a strong culture of service that they're known for it. And people will spend goo gobs of money to go try and learn what they do to bring back to their own organizations just blows my mind because they're still just a company. Mm hmm. They don't necessarily have anything above what any other company can do, but they've figured out the model. They've figured out how to do it right, and now they can sell that, which Mm -hmm. just blows my mind. Okay. Is that good enough? That's it's your answer, so of course it's good (laughs) enough. Um, so favorite Disney memory to this point. He's putting on his thinking cap right now. Yes. And the face that goes with it. <laughs> okay. Favorite Disney memory is not actually directly related to Disney. So we were on one of our Disney cruises. Okay. And we stopped at St. Thomas. Okay. And we took the little bus thing over to one of the beaches. Mm-hmm. Do you remember which beach, Candace? Uh, was it uh, Trunk Bay in St. John? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we got on a boat, then got on a bus. We went to the beach in the, the U.S. Virgin Islands. And as Candace and I, we, we sat down in the sand on the edge of the water. And the water was rolling in such that it was picking us up and pull it, pulling us up shore, and then as the water would go back out, it was then pulling us back down into the water. And we just sat there and did that for, what, 20 minutes? At least. 30 minutes? Mm-hmm. And then as as one does when they're sitting in the sand, you get completely coated in sand. 
we didn't realize just how coated in sand we were until we made it back to the stateroom. And as we took off our shoes and our swim trunks, we were we could have built sand castles in our room. And our room steward even commented, like, what were you doing, building castles in there? And I'm like, I don't even know where all the sand came from. And he said, it was from your shoes. But even to the point where when we were taking off our bathing suits, there was sand, like, inside the lining of our bathing suits because the water was just pulling us in, pulling us out. And that moment is another one of those core memories that I will never forget. Yeah. Because I even found sand in the stitching of my suit when we got home. It was crazy. Dang. But, yeah, that's a good one. All right. Uh, What has been your favorite character interaction? Scrooge McDuck, 100%. I've not had a ton of character interactions. Our last trip, when the four of us went, I just kind of opened my mind to more of it. I'm like, whatever comes, comes. If we go visit a character, we go visit a character, whatever. I'm not one that's going to stand in line to get my picture taken with a, a princess. That's creepy. I just, <laughs> no, that's that's not who I am. A, a 40-something-year-old dude standing in line by himself to wait for a princess just looks weird. It. It looks weird. It feels weird. It is weird. If you're that person, I'm not going to judge, but don't do it. It's just weird. (laughs) (laughs) Not going to judge, but stop it. (laughs) (laughs) But that interaction where Scrooge McDuck was walking out and we saw where he was going to go back in Dino Land and I was first in line just by happenstance and just that entire interaction, like there wasn't a line built up yet so scrooge mcduck was able to take the time with me and just have a great time we got what 15 or 20 different pictures from the the photo the photo pass people mm-hmm. in in that interaction and he even called out and was talking to the rest of the group that didn't want to meet the character in that moment that was just so much fun that's I, I honestly i don't remember other than talking mickey which creeped me out i don't remember any other character interactions that i've had all right. Yeah. So this may have this may go back to your whole question about cruise versus park, but what is your ideal vacation Disney wise and why? I think so like what is the trip I would take if I was planning it today and had like unlimited money or however you want to take the question. There's a couple things that I want to try. So if we're talking like true Disney, how how I know it today, it would probably be a week in the park followed by a week on a cruise ship. Like week after week and just do, and on one of the smaller ships. So that would probably be the ideal as I know Disney today. But I also, I want to get into more of the, not Disney Vacation Club, but the Adventures by Disney stuff. Mm-hmm. Where... Like you can go Alani at in Hawaii. Um, you can do that without Adventures by Disney. Well, but yeah, where I'm going with that is they also have like Hilton Head, oh, where yes. where you can do things and it's under the guise of Disney. Uh, you stay in the Disney bubble, but you're not in the Disney bubble, mm-hmm. which is I, I think again that comes back to the safety, knowing that they have such great track records with trips Mm -hmm. you just know you're going to have a good time so i think the week followed by the week would be like that's what i want to do and even if that's yeah it would have to be disney world if i'm going to spend a week in the parks i wouldn't i don't think you can spend a week in in california but so a week in florida at the parks and then probably a week Ooh, i'm gonna i'm gonna change my answer and then do a repositioning cruise from okay. do yeah. a week in the parks followed by a rep- repositioning cruise from Miami over to San Diego. That way you get to go through the Panama Canal. Yeah, the Panama Canal. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you done? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't know if you were going to have more thoughts. And then and then <laughs> and then <laughs> just let me keep talking. Okay. So you've asked us this question in previous interviews. So if you could tour Walt Disney World with one character, who would it be and why? These questions are harder than I thought they were. Well, you did it to us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) Pick one character to tour Disney World with. Mickey. Why? 
who better to show you the magic of Disney than the character that started it all? Mm -hmm. In my mind, that's you. Who's going to tell Mickey no about anything? Mickey walks up and says, we're going first. Everybody's like, okay, you kind of run the place. So, yeah, I'd say Mickey. Okay. Because I'm also a little bit of an attention whore. And if you're walking around with Mickey, you get all the attention on you. (laughs) Okay. Well, that was special. (laughs) Just called yourself. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. I love no, but I love it. (laughs) Self-awareness is so important. (laughs) It is. It is. All right. With that said, (laughs) so what inspired you to want to start this lovely podcast that we've had going for almost two full seasons now? Yeah. Number one, it's hard to believe it's been almost two full seasons. Number two, I think what inspired me to even come up with the idea is during the pandemic, we when we weren't able to get together, we weren't actively planning trips. We weren't doing those things. It was just fun to kind of talk about memories and and just sort of recall things. And we were doing that through, we're not being plugged for this, but we were doing this through an app called Marco Polo, which is just basically a little video snippet app. And we were just doing questions of the day. And I'm like, you know what? Why can't we get together and do this? Like other people would probably like to listen into this. And so that's what it kind of morphed from is just, we love having these conversations. Let's this is going to sound negative and I don't mean it to be let's force ourselves into those conversations so we don't lose it. Let's, let's keep the conversation going and just make sure that, that we continue to stay connected as a group of, of Disney people living in the Midwest. And if other people want to listen, they can listen because I think we're interesting. Okay. Good point. All right. The next question is if you could ask Walt, one question what would it be and why Ooh, this is a good one I'm trying to think of the right way to word the question so online you often hear people talking about what would walt think walt would roll over in his grave because of this or walt would have never stood for this or walt this walt that and I always kind of think people forget and romanticize Walt a lot. So they, they, they portray what they want the company to be and put that into a persona of Walt that they've created in their head. So I think the question I would ask Walt would be, are you okay? Let me rephrase that. What is the benefit of having people create their own versions of your company? And are you okay with those versions of that company? It's a good question. Mm -hmm. Because Walt didn't like to give up ownership of anything. No. And if you think about it, there's 15 billion Disney fans out there. And they all have their own version of Disney. Mm -hmm. Is he okay with that? Or does he want Disney to be known as something different? So when when I say Walt would roll over in his grave because of they updated Dad's sweater in Carousel of Progress, I know personally that Walt was like, we got to keep this thing growing. We've got to keep it moving. But would he want people to be that tied to the nostalgia like they are? Would he be okay with that? Or... 50 years later, 75 years later, 100 years later, would Walt be disappointed that the Carousel of Progress is still sitting there? I would hope not. That's an interesting thought. Mm, Yeah. But in his mind, he always wanted it to be growing and changing. Mm -hmm. He never wanted it to be done. So maybe he would have thought, okay, Carousel of Progress should still be there, but in a completely different form. It should look different than it does. And instead of just updating the last scene with new clothes, maybe it's animatronics have come a long ways. Do we want to continue to be tied to the history like we've become, or should we just keep moving forward with progress? 
it's it's an interesting question that I'd, I'd love for him to weigh in on. Mm-hmm. You know, that would be an interesting episode topic is if we just talked about, because if you think about it, people like our grandparents, your parents, I feel like are all in the mindset of um, why fix it when it's not broke. Mm-hmm. Whereas we all are pretty acceptive of, we're accepting of change. But also when they change things at Disney World, I feel like a lot of us get a little annoyed. And I want to know, would Walt be more on their side saying, or like, would he be more on the side of why are we changing it? If it's not broke, we should just be adding. Or would he be like, no, times have changed. We need to get things updated. We need new things. So that is such an interesting Mm -hmm. Way like perspective and question that you would ask. Yeah, Walt invented new ways of animation, of moving innovation. He I- invented animation. animatronics. Yeah, well, he and his people, he and well, his team he- did. But yes, got the eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> Love the if I don't get the eye, eye roll, roll at least once an episode, I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Anything more about that? No, I don't think so. Okay. What attraction and or IP would you actually celebrate being added to a park and why? These are some good oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> IP that I would celebrate being added to the parks and then why? Yeah. Which park? Any park? Any park. Okay. okay. So the first, I'm just going to go with the first thing that popped into my head. The answer may change tomorrow, but right now I would celebrate Coco IP making it into the park. Hell yes. And I would celebrate Coco making it making its entrance into IP into the park to take the place of three caballeros. Okay. And again, I say that because it updates that water ride. Mm-hmm. It still stays true to the theme of the land. Mm-hmm. It actually, I think, would tie everything in the pyramid together more Mm -hmm. because you have so much of the Day of the Dead stuff at the beginning of it, and then at the back you have the three caballeros. Mm -hmm. I would obviously want them to keep something three caballeros in there just to, to, like, that's how I want them to deal with the history of things. Let's have throwbacks. Let's have Easter eggs to the things that were there before. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I would bring, I would celebrate them changing Coco or bringing Coco into the Three Caballeros. Just like I'm celebrating right now them bringing uh, Princess and the Frog to Splash Mountain. Mm -hmm. My next question is, is that I think you consider yourself a Disney adult. We all do. Mm -hmm. Um, What does that mean to you? I think it just means I'm a fan, and I make Disney what what I want it to be for me. I, I think so often people portray what they want it to be on other people like Disney it like you've seen those videos where people are like um, people without kids shouldn't be allowed to go to the parks because they take up room for kids you you see people saying my kids should be able to cut in front of you in line because this is their only time going to be here that's not who I am as as a park goer. I'm obviously not going to actively try and ruin somebody else's experience, but I have just as much right to be there as anyone else. My passion is just as good as somebody else's passion. Don't try and take my vacation and make it what you want your vacation to be. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Boom. <laughs> Mike dropped. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> So, if we lived closer to Walt Disney World, where do you think we would s- visit the most often and why? Disney Springs. <laughs> Locked and loaded. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, I'm with you there. I would I would say either Disney Springs because of the restaurants and the bars and that kind of thing. It's more of a social place and you don't have to have a park ticket or a reservation to go. Mm-hmm. You have to have a reservation to get food for yeah. the most part, but you can go there without having to... To like really plan it out. Well, I mean, we could just go get Morimoto street food, sticky yeah. ribs the whole time, and be just fine. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, but it, it was a really close tie. I know I said that quickly, but I think if we lived like close, I think Epcot would be another place we'd spend a ton of time just going exploring. Like I could see us saying, "Okay, for the next eight weeks, we're going to spend a Saturday in each of the the pavilions." Like, today's Mexico, and we're not going to leave Mexico. Mm-hmm. 
except for to ride Spaceship Earth on the way in or out of the park. Well, yeah, because <laughs> duh. 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 <laughs> but I could see us doing that kind of thing too. But I, I honestly think we'd spend more time at Disney Springs, mm-hmm. hanging out at the different bars and and just being social that way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, next question. And you kind of alluded to this a couple questions ago. So the vloggers and influencers that are rampant on social media, what's your take on them? Are they helping or hurting? I think they are setting up bad expectations. Explain. I think when people think about going on a Disney trip, they watch a lot of videos. They watch, they catch up on their favorite vloggers or whatever and they expect that to be their experience. What they don't understand is a lot of those people have media passes. Mm -hmm. A lot of those people are hosted for the different things that they're going to. Like you see them go to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween or the Very Merry Time Christmas on the first night, they are hosted. That's not gonna be your experience. You're not going to be going in and getting every food item. And that's, I think the other thing is they're setting unrealistic expectations about how to do the parks as well like oh let's come in and get all the snacks and i think they're contributing to waste Mm -hmm. a little bit Mm -hmm. um but with that said i think they do have a valuable service it's free advertising for disney we've talked about it before you do not see a lot of disney advertising because they have people that come into the parks with their phones and record every second of their day, edit it down to a 15 or 20 minute video and post it online and it gets 100,000 views. So they don't necessarily have to do all of that advertising. So I think it makes it more accessible. I think they just have to be careful to not ruin the experience or set people up for the wrong expectations. Okay. Good answer. Mm -hmm. They need to become more informative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I feel like a lot of people who post online usually show you just the good things Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that actually like the lines do get annoying. The crowds do get annoying. And if you go to Disney World, you know, for the first time after watching these vlogs, thinking that it's going to be completely happy and magical, which Mm -hmm. for the most part it Mm -hmm. is, but it not everything you see online is completely true, you know? I get irrationally angry when I see these videos about here's how you get 87 fast pass rides in a day. Here's how you you game the system. Those are the kind of things that just drive me insane because it ruins everybody else's experience too. So if if the folks that watch their videos go in and say, okay, I'm going to stack these four lightning lanes using Genie Plus and somebody that it's their first trip doesn't know how to do that, all of a sudden, that person is going to have to wait in every 90-minute ride. Well, the people that go all the time or are doing the the spreadsheet-type planning are going to be able to have a different experience. And it just – that's why I'm a big fan of just get rid of Genie Plus and, and Fast Pass altogether and just let the standby lines go. They are what they are. Mm-hmm. I Yeah, I agree with that. But yeah, Candace is, if, if I, I used to have these foam Husker bricks that I would throw at the TV when I was mad at the Huskers, <laughs> and uh, like I still wish I had those because every time somebody mentions, here's how you fiddle faddle with your Genie Plus, I just, I get irrationally angry. Well, that's not the purpose of the system. Right. Don't try and game the system to improve your value. Right. It's like, use it the way it was intended to be used, not to try and get ahead. Yeah. But that's a different soapbox we can preach about later. We could do an entire episode on why I hate vloggers. (laughs) (laughs) We could. (laughs) Maybe have a couple of them on as guests and I could chastise them for a while. Why do you do this? (laughs) What a great idea. (laughs) Why are you the person you are? (laughs) Whenever we try to make something fun and exciting. Why do you ruin it? (laughs) Why do you make it not? That <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, just a couple more questions. Who do you relate to more, Walt or Roy? Roy. I think I knew that, but why? Roy was the kind of business head behind Disney. Walt was the dreamer. 
Walt was the one that was like, I don't care where the money's going to come from. Let's just do it. Let's get out there and make what we let's grow this the way we want it to grow. And let's do all the things. And Roy was very much. But how are you going to pay for that? And and I think. And again, I'm going to get back on a soapbox for just a second. So many people forget that Disney is a company that has to make money. If they don't make money, none of the things that we love get to exist. And so when people are talking about, well, they're nickel and diming us and they're charging for things that used to be free and they're doing all of these things, they forget that Disney has a business to run. They have to pay for all the people that are providing that magic. And costs are going up around the world. And yes, they're probably charging more than they would absolutely have to. And I get that and and I'm behind it. But we... Every decision that's made by a corporation is about creating value. And they have to balance that value between guest, cast, and shareholders. And I think Roy was very good at that. Mm -hmm. To the point like when I did my um, going down a rabbit hole about uh, the Disney stock price, I talked about the fact that Roy sent Walt to South America to do research while he negotiated with the union. And he did that on purpose because he knew Walt would never give in because mm-hmm. he wanted it to be so much like a family. Roy knew that it was a business and dis- business decisions had to be made. So he sent Walt away. That's I, I admire that about Roy. Mm-hmm. But then he still had that air to the nostalgia too. He built Disney World even though he wouldn't have had to. Mm-hmm. The right business decision at that time probably was not to build Disney World. But he still was like, my brother was a dreamer. I'm going to dream with him. Let's build it. That was his legacy. Yeah. We got to get it done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. All right. And then finally, last words. What haven't we covered yet that we need to know about you? I don't know. I think this is pretty all encompassing. Okay. I'm just trying to think if there's anything that I would want the people to know. (laughs) (laughs) yes the people Candace my adoring fans no I I can't imagine what it would be but I would encourage folks if you want to know anything about any of the four of us if there were things covered in our interviews that we didn't talk about that you'd like to know about us reach out let us know Mm -hmm. we'll be happy to to interact with you and we'd we'd love to get closer to you as fans so just let us know but I, I think I'm good for today Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for sitting mm-hmm. on the hot seat for all three of us. Mm-hmm. We appreciate it. And as far as our listeners, thank you very much for listening. Uh, find us on socials. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Reddit. Uh, interact with us there and uh, pass along the web or pass along the podcast. Share with your friends. Um, and as we're coming to the close of season two, if you want to hear something in season three, let us know. Please. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. Okay. And remember, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow. And we'll see you real soon. Bye.